Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited about today's guest. Tom Matson. We've been having some chit chat before the show and oh my goodness, you are in for some action items today and something that I would say is probably extremely valuable. So turn off all the distractions, get a pen and paper and you're going to want to save this show and listen to it over and over again. I just know it because I've got the chills. And so I want to just let you know first, let me let you know more about Tom. Tom Matson is an international best-selling author and seminar presenter, and he shares his message of business success and failure with more than 100,000 people on four continents. More importantly, his personal coaching clients have generated more than $1 million in sales in dozens of industries. So think about it. You are in the right place at the right time. Entrepreneurs hire Tom to help them build seven-figure authority businesses for them fast because most people are so busy wearing all the hats, doing the things they don't love. Bottom line, the authority does what they're great at. That's you, the authority. And Tom and his team do the rest and guarantee, guarantee them a million dollar income within two years. Think about that. Do we have your attention? It certainly has my attention. As a speaker, he's fun, engaging, and filled with real world stories of success and failure. And today I was telling Tom about an event I went to with some super powerful women and a few super guys too, but it was majority of women. And one of the things that I noticed was that these women were powerful they were heart centered, they were authentic, they were real, and they had something to offer. But after they gave all of this great heart centered, actionable advice, they would say to me, You know, Tammy, people aren't paying me. What do I do? And Tom has some insight into this. So I'm really excited. So Tom, tell me more about you and just a little bit about why you think that you've got some answers for entrepreneurs today. Sure. And, and uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate that. Uh, We're, we're catty corner. I'm in Vancouver. You're in Florida. So we've covered North America nicely today. Uh, And uh, honored to be here. I, I appreciate everyone who takes time to listen in. Part of my journey, and uh, I appreciate that introduction. My mom would be very proud. Thank you for that. The one element that was uh, was misspoken, and I know you had it right, but just misspoke it was a hundred million in sales, not a million in sales. <laughs> and, uh, it's quite because that's important. Because part of what I realized is uh, there's a there's a gal out of uh, uh, Austin, Texas, Katie Sharfin. Um, do you know Katie? Have you met Katie on your travels? She's Alex Sharfin's wife. She runs Alex's organization. Alex is the face of it, but she's the brains and the beauty, frankly, behind it all. And she has this saying that the saddest thing in the world is a broke philanthropist. And I, I believe that to be the case. I, mean, I meet so many heart-centered entrepreneurs that could be doing so much more in the world, giving back and having more impact and leaving a legacy, but they don't have the cash flow to do that. And so they have to make choices. They have to limit their amount of impact that they do. And I, I happen to believe that you can do good and make money at the same time. You just need a different strategy. And so if you're not doing that, definitely tune in. If you're doing that, you already know this. We'll give you some tips to leverage that impact and get even more results from the work that you're doing. But at first, it starts with knowing that you can do both at the same time. 
the old model was what? The old model was what Mark Zuckerberg did, right? Make a whole bunch of money. And then when you're well, wealthy, decide to give a bunch away. That's the old model, right? That's philanthropy. I call this approach, Tammy, strategic philanthropy. Because if you're smart about it and you have a different approach, you can do both. You can do good and make money. We were talking before we got started about our offer for everyone tuning in today of a scholarship to one of our high ticket programs. And, and part of the thing that's amazed me is not the results people are getting from the scholarships. We knew that would be the case. That's why we're giving it away and stay tuned and we'll give you a chance before the show is out to do that. But, but what amazed me was how much money it was earning us giving away our most popular high ticket program. And yet when I thought about it later, it was like, well, of course it works because people love it. They get results. Then they refer other people. And some of them will upgrade to other programs. Intellectually, I got it. But emotionally, you know, we gave away a million dollars worth of scholarships last November. You'd think that would have cost us, but it actually made us. And that's because we're in alignment with this. Uh, really, I call it a new model. And I think the new model is actually a really old model. <laughs> it's, I think it's like time tested and, and very, very old, but, but you know, it's certainly new in conventional business. And for those of you that are information marketer types, uh, or want to be more so, it's very new in that world because in that world, it's all about, you know, getting people in and squeezing them for cash and then having them go to the next step and then the next step and then the next step. And, you know, you can't dare share all your information in the beginning in your webinar. So you, you, it's like, it's like a manipulation strategy. Well, the problem is we don't like being manipulated, right? Who do you know who likes being manipulated? Anyone tuning in right now likes being manipulated? Not many of us, right, Tammy? Even that alligator in your backyard probably doesn't like being manipulated. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. I just noticed in, in the background of you, you have the dolphins and the sea life. And of course, the dolphins, if you think about that representation of that support system, that friendliness, that love energy. And I wanted to go back to that 100 million. And I apologize for that because think about it. In my mind, that it's like instead of saying a hundred million, I said a million because so many people think a million dollars is a lot. But mm -hmm. we know the truth is a million dollars isn't as much as we think, but a hundred million dollars is a lot. So that is actually, it's a shift that all of us need to be thinking. As we go, and you're absolutely right, the old model was, you know, $17, $27, and then you're supposed to go up, up, up from there. And that's why I'm excited for you to share. And I'm really excited about those scholarships. So everybody, you know, lean in because Tom is going to give you information about how you can apply for a scholarship for this but I think what just in what you've said so far, Tom, that I really am resonating with is that you're saying we do not have to wait to get our big message, our big mission, and create a movement. We don't have to wait until we're there. We Correct. Do it now. So thank you for that reminder. Well, and, and, you know, that's a really important, you know, as we record this interview, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi just finished their mag mega launch, or I guess they're now closing everyone or whatever they call it, but they did their big, their big presentation. They're going to do tens of millions of dollars. They're going to be, you know, selling a whole bunch of stuff and good for them. You know, they're Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi, right? What about the rest of us? And, and one of the things that I picked up from their launch this time around, because I study everyone's launches and you should too, right? Study people, whether you're going to model them directly or not, that's not the point. You can, you can, you know, success leaves clues, right? And one of the things they talked about this time, which was new, at least for me hearing it, was the importance of being just 10% ahead. You know, the, w the way I look at it is there's an old adage that says, if you're in grade three, someone in grade five is a god, right? Because they're so much wiser than you. <laughs> and, and so sometimes people think, you know, we work with authority entrepreneurs. Some people think you have to have 20 years experience and be best in the world at what you're doing. And certainly for some of our programs that we do, that's who we, who we target. 
But for most, you simply need to have a way, and there are, there are five keys to this, and I'm happy to go through all of them today with your listeners so that they know. But if you follow these five steps, what we find is anyone can become an authority. Anyone can become an authority. And if you're not an authority, you can do what, frankly, guys like Brendan Bouchard did and Tony Robbins early in their careers. You can become what now people would call a reporter authority where you study other successful authorities and amalgamate all their ideas and share that. You see, the, the whole purpose of selling wisdom and knowledge is what? To shorten the learning curve and speed up the results. That's it, right? Or what we like to call bring order from chaos, <laughs> right? But if you apply it in a business sense, right? You were talking about creating a program for people to be great podcast guests, which Oh my gosh, is that ever needed? <laughs> right? Because it varies. The quality varies so dramatically. And as a host, I can only imagine you, you know, the variation you get. So if you know, but if if you put that program together, that's just the first piece. The the outcome for that guest isn't getting the guest, getting the spot. The outcome is creating impact, creating connection that leads to something, that leads to a client asking for a report or a client applying for something or a potential business or a strategic alliance. A lot of people forget that when they're in media, whether it's podcast or radio or TV, that the ability to connect and and find a way to partner is way more powerful than recruiting one person for your program. Right. And right? the thing is, and, and people, everybody, they, they'll always talk mm-hmm. about, I want to make an impact. I want to make have influence, but they always forget about the the in, the M word, the money or the income part. And that's why podcasting I think is so powerful is because if you're using it strategically, which is I know what your expertise is, you can have every single thing you do take you on that path that will make it so that you can become that strategic philanthropist. I can't even say the word. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, you actually said the key word in your first part of that description. I love it. I love it. And then we can dive into these five steps if you want. But that was strategically. Because a lot of people, my experience is, I've worked with tens of thousands of entrepreneurs and small business owners. I've been in this game for 36 years which, uh, as Alex Mendozian said to me when I was interviewing him once, uh, he calls himself a BG. He was on the internet before Google. <laughs> same here. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're old timers in this game, but uh, bricks and mortar businesses, same thing. You got to look at the amount of impact you're going to make in the world and how to structure it. And you need to be compensated. You need to be compensated for it. And it's not a trade off. This is the thing that if, Nothing else sticks today. I hope that you are listening in. You realize you can have more profit and more life if you create a movement, if you create a movement. You're not going to do that if you just sell some report. Not going to happen, right? And podcasts are great at creating movements. They're also great at wasting time. What's the difference? Strategy, not tactics, right? How many people have you met, Tammy, that have a great podcast that do all the editing right and all the show notes and the cl- and all the stuff, all the technical stuff is right, but they absolutely make no impact from their podcast, right? Thousands of them, thousands of them. That is something there are like 75,000 or 750,000 podcasts out there. And if you go look, Many of them are actually not even in existence anymore because people gave up because they didn't have a, a plan or any the five steps like what you're. Yep. You got to have a strategy to, to monetize what you're doing. You have a, I believe, you have a moral. Well, one of my mentors was Jay Abraham. Um, I think the smartest marketing guy on the planet, and he said, if you have a product or service that delivers value, you have a moral obligation to reach as many people as possible. And I, that's a completely different way of looking at it, right? It's a, you have a moral obligation to get your work out there. And yes, you'll get compensated if you do a good job delivering impact, but it's not about the compensation. It's about getting it out there. It's about increasing the impact. So should we jump into the five steps? 
Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I, obviously, you can tell that I'm very interested in this topic because I'm, I'm listening going, oh, my goodness, I, I can think of all these different ways. But, yes, I definitely want to get into the five steps. Fabulous. So the first key, if you're going to make we, – we call this creating a game changer program, right, because it's literally a game changer for you and for your clients. The first key is solving big problems. There's only There's only – if you're going to make good money at this – you need to solve six or seven figure problems. If you solve really small problems, then you're going to make small money. And let's take the podcast guest example idea you had, Tammy, for that, right? If you want to be a guest on a podcast show, you help them how to be a great guest. That's a small problem that you solve. If you then at the same time teach them how when they're being a great guest, they can build a relationship with the host to do a joint venture later on. And they can make an offer that leads people to respond and opt in and become part of their tribe. And, 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 and you, you know, layer in four or five different strategies. Now you could have a program right away. I could see this six figure podcast guest where you teach people to make a hundred thousand a year or more being guests on podcast shows. That's a totally different game wrapped around the same skill, right? Because now what you're doing is you're saying you're solving a big problem. And there's five reasons people buy, all right? So for those taking notes at home, it's make money, save money, stay out of jail, or in the corporate world, compliance, right? Have a better life and have better relationships. Those are the five areas, really. And what you want to do is narrow down what's the best you can possibly do in that area. And I'll give you a tip to make it really easy. Tie it into the first one somehow. If you want to make money, if you want to monetize this gift, right? I know there's a lot of heart-centered entrepreneurs tuning in today. I love heart-centered entrepreneurs. In fact, one of our divisions is called Six Figure Woo Woo. <laughs> we have a whole division for heart-centered entrepreneurs. So I love it. You want to align the chakras and do all this stuff. I, I Fortunately, I swing, I, I, I cross over to both worlds. I can put a foot in either world and I love it. But most heart-centered entrepreneurs, most woo-woo entrepreneurs are broke. Yes. And, and they're doing incredibly good work. And so I'm actually more pissed off at that world being broke than money-making people being broke because the work they do is far more impactful on the world. And so, you know, this is really important. If you want to monetize that, tie it in. I'll give you an example. We do these events called Strategic Alliance Summits where we get people together together and we do joint ventures and strategic alliances in the morning. And then we play in the afternoon and evenings. It's like this really cool live event, Tammy. It's my favorite of all the things I do because you're building high trust relationships. You're at a nice resort. You're working only in the mornings, <laughs> which is kind of nice. And then you're just getting to know people. And, and you know how important that is. You just mentioned that conference you're at, right? Getting, so you get to know people. When you know them, you know whether to trust them or not. Are they a dolphin? Or are they a shark, right? Like, who do you want to play with? And and so on. So we had this one event where, I don't know, I think we were in Las Vegas. Uh, in fact, we were at the Mandalay Bay, the poor hotel that got all that shooting at later, years later. And uh, there's this gal who was a, um, she unleashed energy, money blocks, money blocks. She unle got rid of money blocks. And it was a very, you know, spiritual process of how she did it. And I said, well, I said, how does it work? And she describes the impact. And I said, I said, well, you know, you, does it, does it like monetize for the people? She goes, oh yeah, everyone, especially if they're entrepreneurs. And then she went on to give me a bunch of examples. And I said, what do you charge for it? And she told me, I went, come on. It was so low. I couldn't believe it. And she said, well, people won't pay for this service. I said, well, that's because you're packaging it wrong. If you deliver that sort of result, you know, one of the five principles we'll talk about in a sec is guaranteeing it. Just structure it in a way where you guarantee that result. And you could charge a whole bunch more. And we were just, this was on a break at the conference. We're having some Mai Tais around the pool. And I never thought much about it. And then we went back to the conference and we continued on. And I lost touch with her until about six months later. And we were doing um, a major online summit. And I wanted someone on that topic to interview. So I reached out to her and I said, you know, would you be interested? She said, yes, great. We're doing the pre-interview interview. And I said, by the way, how's your business? And she told me she had 5X'd her sales in the last six months over the previous year. And she said, by the way, thank you so much. That I, Remember we talked and we had the drink and da-da-da. And I, frankly, I had forgotten. 
she reminded me and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I remember. She goes, well, I took, I took your advice and now I charge 35,000 or 50,000 for what I was charging $500. But I guarantee results and I've added other things in it and she, she basically follows the five steps we're going to talk to you about. She just done it on her own and figured out. And I said, why did you call me and let me know? That's fantastic. And now she's, she's living with her and her husband are, are semi-retired, if you will, to Costa Rica. She surfs every day. She has this amazing lifestyle and she's helping people all over the world. They, and they fly to Costa Rica. Many of them fly to Costa Rica to work with her because she's awesome at that. And so, you know, the first thing you want to do is just figure out what's your big problem you're going to solve. And if you can tie it into money, especially if you heart-centered entrepreneurs, find a way to tie it in. You know, we were coaching someone on one of our, one of our coaching calls yesterday. Uh, we do group coaching calls, and this gal helped people free up time. She, in fact, she can free up 20 hours a week. That's her average. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. But people weren't responding to it. And I said, well, consider this. What can they do with that time that makes them more money? Oh, they can do this, they can do this, they can do this, they can do this. So she knew, but she wasn't marketing that bridge. She was just marketing the free up the time. And the sad thing about for most of us is we don't value our time. We don't value our time, right? Why are most podcasts free? Because we don't value our time, right? Have you ever met J.B. Glossinger? He's a fellow Floridian. No. He lives uh, north of you and lives on a golf course. And uh, Morning Coach is his brand. And he now has been, I want to say, 13 years podcasting. 13 years. uh, Every day, a show. And people pay. People pay for his podcast like 27 or 30 bucks a month, but he's got tens of thousands of people, Tammy, paying for his podcast. And, and I remember asking him, because I, I, I lost touch with him for a few years and then got back in touch with him last year. And I said, so, you know, how are things going? Da, da, da. He says, yeah, yeah, we're still doing this. And now it's about here. And then I go, that's fantastic. I said, I, I never did ask you, how did you get into charging for a podcast? He said, oh, it was desperation. <laughs> he said, that's the only way I could feed myself. I had to charge. No one else was doing it, but I realized if I didn't, I couldn't make a business out of it. And I want to golf every day. And now he does. He golfs every day. He works three hours in the morning. And then he golfs every day, literally every day, uh, unless he's on the road doing other things. So solve big problems and you can really make a big difference for people. That makes sense, number one? That makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad that you're busting that. that it's, it's like a, a myth that a lot of podcasts gurus push oh you should never ever charge for a podcast you shouldn't do you know it's always telling you all these things that you shouldn't do right but again like you said that person he said hey i needed some cash and so he offered it and of course what he was providing is great value and people are willing to pay for something that they perceive to give them great value and he makes the vast majority of his money selling high ticket masterminds. Yeah. So, so, so it's, you know, he, he actually is doing some of the stuff we're talking about. Um, but he, that didn't come right away. That came as he learned from experimenting with it. And that's actually the next step. The next step, number two, for you note takers is your job is to bring order from chaos. You see, they want to know, your, your ideal client wants to know their life will be easier with your help. That's why you're doing this, or that ought to be why you're doing this. So you need to organize your, your method, your system, whatever it is you're teaching, into five stages. That's the best practices today, five stages. And there's a bunch of reasons why, but we've only got an, you know, half an hour to an hour today to talk about this. So I won't get into the psychology and the neurolinguistic programming behind it. But just trust me, listeners, five is better than four or three or seven. If you get above five, it's too, it's too much for people. You're not making it easy for them. Below, you're not adding enough value. So five is the sweet spot and not four or six, by the way. Five, very powerful. So that means, by the way, I'm not saying cut stuff out. If step four is do these 12 things, so be it, right? Do these 12 things. No problem at all. But you want to make sure that you organize it into five. And then you want to name your process. You want to name your process. 
if you're going to be an authority, you need to name your process. And I'll give you a hint. Don't get cute. Don't get all trademarky on it. Name it. I mean, our most profitable program, our most profit producing program is called Million Dollar Book Launch Program. What do you think it's about, Tammy? <laughs> Launching your book and making a million dollars. Yeah, like like it's not complicated. And when someone hears the name, they get it right away. So when you name your process, I mean, the process we're teaching you for creating this this literally a game changer program is called the game changer program. And and the scholarship we're going to offer everyone is the game changer program academy, where we teach you to do this and monetize it in four months, and you're up and running and making money off of it. And the scholarship means it's 100% free. We'll talk about that. Keep tuned. Um, But so order from chaos, five stages, name your process. And then here's really important. Every stage needs to have a finish line and a prize, a finish line and a prize. IBM does this with their big ongoing clients. And they're pretty good at creating ongoing revenue from their big clients. If you know anyone in IBM, they're really good at recurring revenue. They're one of the best companies in the world. In fact, it used to, people would joke, IBM, oh yeah, inferior but marketable. (laughs) That was the joke because they weren't the best computers. They weren't the best software, but boy, could they sell. Well, part of their magic was this, finish line and prize, finish line and prize. So what's an example of that? A finish line is you know you're there. You know you're there. You know exactly what you're there. So uh, in our, in our, uh, in many of our programs, the finish line is you have a validated high ticket program. You haven't sold one, but you have it validated, which means you know it will sell. That's the prize part. But you validated it by doing this certain form of research with your ideal target market. So you know people will buy it. You know people will spend money on it. And you haven't developed it all yet. So important. People in our industry always talk about, oh, sell it first and then do it later. But they forget. If you just do that randomly, you're just throwing darts blindfolded. (laughs) You need to have your strategy. So you need to have your five stages and for each stage, a finish line. So you know when you're there and a prize, what's in it for me getting that finish line? What's in it for me getting that finish line? We have a one entire division is local area masterminds. It goes under the name, get it together. And in the get it together brand, we have local entrepreneurs join our mastermind and we guarantee them a quarter million in new sales in 12 months. But you don't, that's like, that's the end of stage five, the quarter million, right? So we look at each of it and we break it down into five stages. And in that example, because it's a business mastermind, each of the stages have a, have a sales target. And when they get there, we'll talk about this in a moment, that that's when they make the payment, the next payment. They don't get there. They don't make the payment because of time. They get there because of results right? Because of results. So that's, uh, we can talk more about that if you want in a bit, but that's uh, bringing order from chaos number two. The third, and this is so important for heart-centered entrepreneurs, do good and make money at the same time. Do good and make money at the same time. Build it into your model. Many of you have heard of Tom Shoes. Have you heard of Tom Shoes, Tammy? I believe so. Yeah. So you buy a pair of shoes and what do they do? Oh, that they... Uh, give a pair of shoes to somebody. Needy kids. Like, needy kids. You buy a pair of shoes and they give a pair of shoes to needy kids. Bomba, we have something, you know, pardon me? The Bamba does the socks to the home. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And and a business near you called Four Ocean has, oh, my bracelet's not on, right? You buy a, you buy a bracelet made from recycled plastic and they pull a pound of plastic out of the ocean. Really cool model today is to build that in. I call it a transformational contribution program. And if you ever reach out to me on LinkedIn or Facebook and ask, I share that training for free to anyone, anytime, um, because it's literally a game changer for you and your business. You want to pick a cause. You want to link to that cause. In our, in our million dollar book launch program, we do a strategic philanthropy book launch. Instead of selling a bunch of books to make money for the author, or giving it away free with shipping and handling and make money for the post office. We sell the books and all the proceeds, all the net proceeds go to a cause. But what we actually do is split 50 50 the money that comes in and 50% buys traffic for the launch to build the tribe. And the other 50% goes to the cause. 
So they get 100% of net, but they get about 50% of gross. You follow me? Yes. That allows us to do good and make money at the same time. Right, we're just launching a, a leadership book uh, next week as we record this, and our goal is to raise enough money to feed five thousand hungry kids. And you know, these guys are go getters. We'll we'll blow past that number. I have a feeling. But even if we let's say we only get to four thousand, a book launch, we feed four thousand hungry kids. How freaking cool is that? Yeah. Right. Like on its own. Right. So you can do good and make money at the same time. You just got to build it into your model. That's number three. Number four, though, is really one of the most important parts. You must guarantee results. Um, My mentor, Jay Abraham, called it risk reversal because the goal was to take the risk off your prospect's shoulders and put it on your shoulders, right? And so a lot of people get freaked out when they hear this because like, well, I can't guarantee if they're going to do this or this or this. Yeah, if you just sell a course online, you're absolutely right. Tony Robbins says his own people, 97% never complete their courses. 97%. And he's Tony freaking Robbins, right? He's got some pretty good trainers and motivators, and he's like Mr. Inspiration. So how could you or I expect we're going to get more, right? Courses do not get results. I guarantee every one of you listening is giving me an amen in your head right now on that topic because you bought a course you haven't got results on. Now, if you're an overachiever, good for you. If you're part of that 2% that can take a course and always get results, good for you. But the rest of us either need help or coaching or there's no hope. <laughs> now, my experience is people listening to business podcasts are in that middle group. They're not in the no hope category because they're not listening to podcasts. They're binge watching Netflix. Let's be clear. If they're watching this, listening to this type of podcast, they have hope, but they do need help. Most of us need help. Most of us need coaching. And so if you charge more and you link it to results, guess what? You can build in extra elements of support, right? Our scholarship that we're going to give away shortly to anyone listening in that qualifies, anyone listening in that qualifies, not one, but anyone, is designed so that there are 12 monthly coaching calls, group coaching calls, 12. Why do we have 12? Because we found out that four didn't cut it. It just, it wasn't enough. And so now we have, we have four topics and we do every of one of the first three weeks, we repeat those same coaching calls. So if you're working on creating your high ticket program, there's a call each week of the first three weeks of the month. Now, we happen to believe the last week of the month, every entrepreneur should take off, right? Our belief is you should take the two weekends and the last week together, nine days, and take off and recharge and play and have fun. Or be strategic and work on your business, but not have meetings, not be in your business. And so we don't schedule our coaching calls then. We don't schedule our masterminds then. And we encourage all of our clients to do the same thing. You know, this is sort of like a hidden goal of my movement making is that every entrepreneur takes the last week of the month off. And uh, to do that, of course, you have to set your business up to work with or without you. And there's all kinds of other things to pull that off. But back to the guarantee side, you want to find a way to do that. And so the first, there's multiple steps to this. But the first step is think of the biggest possible guarantee you could offer or your biggest success story you ever had right? We were talking about your example of being a guest on podcast shows, Tammy, right? Yeah. So the what would be the biggest possible guarantee? Well, guarantee them a six-figure living being a guest on podcast shows. I've never seen anyone anywhere offer that training today. But who wouldn't want to make six figures being a guest on a podcast show, right? It'd be totally fun because running a podcast, I have kudos to you and everyone I'm on. I, I'm, I'm not disciplined enough to run my own podcast. I love talking. I'm I'm sure I could be a good podcast host. I can ask great questions. I can be Larry King. I can be quiet and ask great questions. But you know what? There's so many elements to line up. So I admire the work that you guys do when it comes to that. But if you can actually teach someone to make six figures being a guest on shows, first off, they're going to be better on your show. Big bonus, right? Second, they're going to love you to death and they're going to refer other people to come to your show, right? And you can create a real business with real income. So you start with the biggest guarantee. Then you figure out how to pull that guarantee off. And that takes work. 
right? That's, you know, can be a whole interview right there on how do you do that? We teach that method in our scholarship program. We teach it, but you know, you got to put some work in. There's no shortcuts to figuring out. And it comes to redundancies. The secret is redundancy. What do I mean by that? Multiple ways to get the result. Multiple ways. The queen of impact, Wendy Lipton Dibner. Have you ever met Wendy on your travels, Tammy? Yes, I have. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She gets 93% completion. 93%. She teaches 18 methods, 14 of which are essentially redundant ways to ensure her clients get results. 14. No wonder she gets 93% completion. And by the way, she's not happy with that. She wants to get up to 100. I'm like, girl, you're like rock star in my world. Right. So, but she's got 14 different systems overlapping redundancies to do that. So it can be done. Is it easy? No. Is it lucrative if you figure it out? Uh huh. Especially with this last piece, which is you link your payments to results. So we teach people, Tammy, if you're going to do that program, six figure podcast guest, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a $25,000 program for sure, because you teach them to make a hundred thousand a year. No problem. We teach people to charge a quarter up front in that pricing structure, a quarter when they're making enough money to pay for that next payment, i.e. can self-fund it, and the other half when they get to the finish line. So you're not asking for $25,000 up front. You're asking for $6,250, but you're guaranteeing them $100,000 a year income. And they know that you're, you get paid more when you get them there. Do you need any sales training to sell that? No. You don't need any fancy subconscious commands. Tammy, by now you're stepping into your future. You're claiming your destiny. It's time to claim that destiny. You don't need any of that crap. All you need is, here's how we do it. Would you like our help? Now, we do that through a master class where we teach, you know, a three-hour master class, and we teach the whole method that we're selling. This is also like an extra for experts here. Teach the whole method that you're doing and your offer simply is, would you like help? Now you know what to do. Would you like help? Because the do, what to do is easy. Go to Google. You can Google any topic. I bet you, I haven't done this, but I bet you if we Googled and put in quotes, uh, six-figure income being a guest on podcast shows, there'd be all kinds of articles, all kinds of training, all I, kinds of information will come up. I, but I also bet there'd be no one guaranteeing it. No, right. I don't think I ran into anyone guaranteeing all that. I, I've seen and heard a lot of people saying being a podcast guest is like the ultimate way to make money. But then when I actually dig into the programs, the, again, like you're saying, they don't, there's something missing. Totally. And yeah. part of it is they haven't taken time to figure out how do I see? Here's the cool thing. If I collect payments based on getting you there, I'm going to figure out how to get you there. <laughs> it's like, because my, my income is linked to getting you there, right? Take our million dollar book launch clients, right? The last half of a hundred, by the way, we charge a hundred thousand dollars for that program. The last half, $50,000, we don't get until they get a million in sales. So we say to people that we're accepting in the program, unless you quit on yourself or you get fired by us for not playing by the rules, we're going to get you there, right? We actually guarantee it in 18 months, not two years. In the, in the intro, we say two years because some of the programs are two years, but that particular one is 18 months. But our goal is actually less than a year. Well, we don't care if it takes three years. We don't care. We're going to work with them till we get there. We have lots and lots of financial incentive. And we have lots of program incentive to do that. And that's what you want to do with your program. You want to link your payments to results. Now, make sure you get some money up front. People need skin in the game. We value what we pay for. In North America especially, we value what we pay for. So it's important, unless you're really advanced, and I say that because our scholarship, we're not asking for any money, right? It was a gamble when we tested it, but we're pretty advanced at this. We thought it would make sense. But we didn't know. We gave away a million dollars worth of scholarships last November to test this idea. And it went so well that this year we're giving away $10 million worth of scholarships. 
And so we're super excited about that. But that is not a strategy for new people to try out of the gates. Get 25% up front. Get your people having some skin in the game, and they will put more effort in. So that's number four. Any questions on guaranteeing results, Tammy, before we go to number five? I'm really excited about it because you gave me a lot of ideas about how to guarantee results so that people, you have skin in the game, they have skin in the game, and it's a win-win-win situation for everyone. And and it takes away that fear that many people have the fear of giving guarantees. Yeah. And I've been guaranteeing results since I was 23. I learned early, early on to do that. And it is so much fun. You know, at at the very least, half up front, half at the end. At the very least, people listening in do that. There are the ways. We make more money by not putting half up front. We make more money by asking for less than half up front. Right. So there's some advanced advice here for those of you more experienced entrepreneurs out there. But bottom line is you link it to results. First off, here's what happens from our data. Nine times as many people raise their hand to learn more. Nine times you will screen better though. So you won't do nine times the sales. But what we find is you'll triple, you'll triple your sales. So same approach, same everything with a good guarantee, good risk reversal, triple the sales. And it's so much more honorable. It's so much more honorable because if someone gets involved and they don't do what they're supposed to do to execute, they're not having to pay the rest of it. In fact, our contracts, our agreements say that each each next payment is at the sole discretion of the client. We do that on purpose. We don't want to force someone to be successful. I like that because there are some people who they they – try to make you pay for things even though they're not delivering yep. what they promised. And so then when people say, I don't want to pay you anymore, they go, oh, well, you signed a contract that says no matter what, you yep. have to pay. And I've even seen some where it was all for the coach or whomever it was. And it was all like as if everything was on the client but the truth is some of the coach, coaches are not in honor because they know that a lot of people, like you said, that a large percentage won't do anything at all. Yeah. And, there's a very small and, and, and this is a point of, of contentious debate in many of the masterminds I'm in or, or Facebook groups that I'm in. Um, is it whose responsibility is it to get results? And I happen to believe that if we're the ones taking money, it's our responsibility to get our clients results, period, period. Does that mean all of our clients get results? No. We have had clients who get in and do sweet F all, and it doesn't matter what we try and do to motivate them. They do nothing. And, and so you're not going to change humanity, <laughs> right? Let's be clear. You're not going to change humanity. But what you can do is learn to be better at screening. Right. You can also build redundancy in and you can, you know, have accountability partners. We call them success partners and you can have lots of other ways to add elements or frankly, you can do it as a done for you service. Right. So imagine this, your program's $25,000, right? The one we're playing with here and it's guaranteed six figure income podcast guest. Well, what if you included Sheila and Lissa's service of booking shows? right? You partnered with them or someone else that books people on podcast shows. And now you included the actual shows. Guess what? Now it's a hundred thousand dollar program. And now you're guaranteeing them a million dollars in business. It might take two years or three years or four years. But now if you actually added in booking people on shows and they were great guests, well, how much easier would it be for you Like, you know, when Sheila called you up, you didn't know me. You don't know if I was going to be enjoyable, quiet, dud, what, you know, like you get a bit of an idea from the one sheets, but you know, you don't know, right? You know, you're, you're more experienced at this. So you probably had a better insight, but I've had some really good friends of mine that have experienced shows call me up and say, uh, yeah, I got pitched your show yesterday. (laughs) And I go, they were missing all your, this and this and this about you. And I think, oh, thank you for the feedback. I'll let them know. Right, because it's an evolutionary process of doing that, and so if you added in all of the shows, you literally could get a hundred thousand dollars of fees and a million dollars worth of impact for people. 
Like it's a phenomenal way to do it. And, and you know, meaning you may not want to start there, but the reason I brought it up is sometimes you have to do done for you. Sometimes you have to do that in order to guarantee results, because if you leave it up to the client, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. The early version of million dollar book launch three years ago was called strategic philanthropy book launch. And it was just the launch part that I mentioned earlier. You had to bring a book. And if you had a, whatever your back end was your back end. And we sold three of them for, there's $25,000 program, 12, five up front, 12, five. When we got 5,000 people in your tribe, raised a bunch of money for charity and launched your book. Simple offer. Three people bought from one presentation at one event right away. Nine months later, none of the three had brought us a book. Nine months later, we couldn't do our work. We'd taken this money and they'd done, they hadn't brought the book. And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. You know, cat ate my homework. Dog got in the way. Dad died. Mom died. Like all kinds of stuff got in the way and they had no book. And so my, my about to be new business partner said, why are you not writing the book for them? I'm like, what are you talking about, Frank? He goes, you got to write the book for them. I'm like, it's their book. It's their wisdom. He said, so figure out a way to pull the wisdom out of their brain, organizing it and get it done. And silly boy, get a high ticket program for them so they can monetize your 5,000 people. And that's what the million dollar book launch program became. We include doing the book and the high ticket program. And it's like awesome. And everyone loves it. And so you can do the exact same thing. If you're tuning in, you can do the exact same thing. But there is one other element. Number five, we've got to cover that before we're done today, which is you need to make your program scalable. A lot, a lot of people misuse that word scalable today. They, they, they equate it with sell more. Sell more is not scalable if you can't handle more people. Right. Sell more is just sell more. <laughs> Scalable is, here's my definition. And I got it from that Frank guy I mentioned just a few seconds ago. Um, he wrote a book called Scale, right? Literally, and he's an expert on this topic. And he, if think about this as an authority listening in. You get a new client, no additional personal time required. Holy cow, that's a tough standard. But that's truly scalable, truly scalable. Are we 100% scalable in all of our programs? Nah, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. We're close. We're close. Our scholarships, yes, 100% scalable, which is why I'm talking to you and we're giving them a bunch away and we want to give away $10 million worth this year because we can. It is scalable for us. But our million dollar book launch program, nah, uh, uh. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not scalable yet. We're working on it. We're working on it, but here's the key. Five elements to make it scalable. Your program should only have these five components and, frankly, nothing else. The first is virtual training. We all know that, right? You record the content. You have it available in the cloud, right? Podcasts are a perfect example of that. Almost every podcast is not live. It's recorded, right? I got one booked the other day by our team, and it's going to be live, and I was so excited. It's going to be live. It's on one of those big networks, right? And that's part of their shtick. They broadcast it on radio and it becomes a podcast afterwards. I'm like, fantastic. Let's go. Let's do that. But you know, most content, most training is recorded because you can pause. You can stop, right? Some of you are already hopefully taking Tammy's advice and have downloaded this and paused and rewound and played back some of the parts because we're going fast. We got lots to cover. So training is best done in recorded format in the cloud today. And my favorite is the element we're using to record this, which is Zoom, because you can do video and audio all at the same time. If you get a corporate account, not many people know this. I didn't for 10 years. If you get a corporate Zoom account, they transcribe it all too. Every one of your videos on the spot. It's like crazy cool. So that has advantages too, because you can turn that into PDFs or workbooks or worksheets. So first one, virtual training makes sense, right? Next is group coaching, not one-on-one. One-on-one coaching is not scalable. We all know that, right? It's our time for money. It's not scalable. Does that mean you should never do one-on-one? No, there are times where it's appropriate to do one-on-one. You just need to know it's not scalable when you do it. So we do our launch calls for Game Changer Program Academy, the scholarship thing, in a group format. We do our launch calls for Million Dollar Book Launch (laughs) one-on-one. Because we've got a lot riding on the success of the launch and what we do. 
So, so there is a place for one-on-one sometimes, but the ongoing coaching shouldn't be one-on-one. It should be group. And in fact, here's how we describe it now more accurately. One-on-one coaching in a group setting. And whether you have 10 people listening in or 50 people listening in, it's the same work for you or your coach. Same work, right? Same time even. Right. Yesterday, I run, I run one of our coaching calls a week. And yesterday, I had my call and I get on and we were slammed with questions all the way through. And I actually had a hard stop at the end. Often I'd go extra, but I had another call I had to go on. We we're working on a strategic alliance. I had to jump off and we were literally nonstop for the entire hour. Boom, 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 boom. It didn't matter whether there was five people or 55 people on the call. It took me an hour, got as much value as I could and off we went right? So group coaching, very important. Next, masterminds. Group coaching, you or your coach are the guru. Masterminds, your participants are the gurus. They're helping each other. And your job is just to facilitate that brilliance. So to, back to your program, Tammy, we almost got it all mapped out here now, right? Six-figure podcast guest program. Imagine that mastermind of people that are awesome at being guests on podcast shows, sharing and and helping each other, among other things, introduce themselves to guests like your hosts like you. Oh, yeah, I just did a show last week. Is this gal Tammy? You're going to love her. Oh, she would love what you're talking about, Joanne. Yeah, do you want an introduction? Oh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Like that alone in the mastermind would make your mastermind worth the whole program fee you'd be charging. Just that alone. Right. So, so, uh, masterminds, very, very important. The key is if you're running your own masterminds, the key is that it's not about the person in the hot seat. Most people mess this up when they run masterminds. It's about everyone else. And so you need to ask the most powerful question in a mastermind, which is how does this apply to me? Or if you're hosting it, if you're facilitating it, how does this apply to you? How does this apply to you? How does this apply to you? Not does this apply to you? How does this apply to you? That's the power. And then that's number three, masterminds. All three of those first things, virtual training, group coaching, and masterminds, every good program will have. The next two, some will have, some won't, depending on your program. Okay? So number four is scalable done-for-you services. Scalable done for you services. Best example of that in our program that we're doing for Tammy here is uh, one sheet, right? A good one sheet, a great one sheet, right? Well, you know what? A great one sheet comes from a template. And if you have a great template of a great one sheet, it's not a lot of work to put their information on the next version of it. But if you start it from scratch, it's a ton of work. Right. I'm a template guy. I love templates. So when I was updating this plan to go out and reach thousands and thousands of people and give away $10 million worth of, of uh, podcasts or of scholarships on podcast shows, I knew I needed a good one sheet. And, 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 and because of that, I went to the people that I admired and trusted. And I remember speaking and sponsoring uh, New Media Summit with Steve Olsher when he first launched. And so I went to his portal and I looked for one sheet templates. And I didn't like anything I saw. And then I saw Steve's one sheet. And I went, ooh, I like it. And it was two pages, not one. And it had all the stuff I wanted on there. It was like, done. So I hired someone. I said, create me that sheet with my information on, happened to be Fiverr. But instead of five bucks, I paid 255 bucks. Because I hired someone awesome who would do it quickly and make unlimited changes because I knew I knew I'd probably want to tweak it. And so, you know, it was still fiverr.com, right? For five bucks, all right, 255 bucks, but I don't care. I got a great one sheet now. And I got, yeah, and I, and I have the Adobe files so that I can change it if I want now simply and easily, right? And make changes going forward. So there's an example, a great simple example of a scalable done for you service, right? That you could do for everyone coming into that program, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And and in fact, if you had the right questionnaire, they could answer all these questions in like a Google form or something, and you could outsource putting it together to someone in the Philippines. So you wouldn't have to do it even 
and it would look awesome. And then you just polish it and you take an overview before you send it on to your client and say, okay, now this is good. Oh, no, you missed this. Or, oh yeah, no, this is, you know, the, the word's wrong. You got spelt wrong or whatever. Like, you know, you can, you can, you can be a, a sober second glance at it, right? And make it better. That's number four. And number five is live events and workshops. Live events and workshops. Not every program needs this, right? But the way to think about it is, are they better off? Do they get better results with it? And I'll give you a really fresh example. We did a launch call last night. Um, we have Game Changer Program Academy, the scholarship that we're going to give away. And then our, in that program, there's an upsell offer that people, if they choose on their own, we don't pitch it, um, includes a done-for-you master class and a whole bunch of other elements. And it's called Game Changer Program Inner Circle. We did that launch call last night with a gal from Italy. She's on vacation in India at an ashram. <laughs> you think she's a heart-centered entrepreneur? And we were talking about retreats. Her thing is retreats. She does retreats all over the place. So we're looking at six-figure retreats, seven-figure retreats, how to do it, exploring different things. She's got a business sense. So initially, we started down that path. But her passion is spirituality and entrepreneurs that are into spirituality on this personal journey of discovery. And it was so dramatic. She would talk about one very, very efficiently. And then she would talk about the other and she just beamed. And she's like, yeah, but, but people won't pay for spirituality retreats. I said, all depends on how you structure it. All, so the program we're going to create for her will be something like six figure woo woo retreats. And we will teach people to run retreats in exotic locations around the world. She happens to have a place in Italy that can hold retreats. So we're looking at the whole uh, eat, eat, drink, pray stuff. We're going to do Italy, India, and Bali is what we're mapping out for her. So in her program, she will have a retreat, of course, because she teaches retreats. So it makes sense. But she could teach all of the information without doing that, Right. Yours, right, to be a great podcast guest, we're thousands of miles apart right now. Right. And yet we're, it's like we're together. So you need to teach them to have good cameras and good lighting and good sound and a few technical elements, but you don't need them to physically come to Florida to learn this. And so you would only do a retreat as the last stage of your program if you want to set up your next highway to play with you. You follow that? So if you wanted to have a high-end follow-on mastermind, you might want to retreat as the last part of stage five where they come together live and they get to bond with you extra and then they play at a higher level or not. Like you don't have to do that. And so that's the, the fifth one is live events and workshops. Sometimes it's essential. Sometimes it's not. Questions of those five. We went through them pretty quickly, but. Oh, I'm just amazed that I, I right there you just gave people um, a roadmap to creating something phenomenal. The virtual training and the fact recording on Zoom is phenomenal. I learned something. I did not know that the corporate Zoom account did transcription. Ten and years I was a customer and I didn't know. That piece of information alone is gold because one of the things that I tell everyone is that they should transcribe every podcast that they do so that they can pull that content into blogs or, or use it on social media. So that's phenomenal. The group coaching is absolutely on target because um, it is very difficult to do one-on-one -on, -one on everything. And then of course the mastermind and the question, how does this apply to me or how does this apply to you is a phenomenal question because everyone should be always listening to everything saying, well, how would that apply to me in my business, yeah. even though it might be totally different. And that's where the breakthroughs come. Like in masterminding, I think masterminding done right is the greatest force for good in business, period. There's nothing more powerful, not free masterminds. They tend not, they tend to wear out, but paid ones are the greatest force for good. I'm in paid ones and I run paid ones. So I can say that from both directions. If it's done right, and the done right is that last, that one key piece, just about everything else you can mess up. If you do that part right, you can make it powerful. 
I mean, we've spent millions learning other things to do in masterminds that we build into all of ours. But that one thing was a turning point because if you only benefit when you're on the hot seat, then everyone else is tuning out almost, right? Whereas if you benefit most when you're not on the hot seat, everyone's tuning in. And so the ideas are better. And the breakthrough ideas, especially in live masterminds, the breakthrough ideas are always on the other side of silly and stupid ideas. And I say that people will laugh at me. I'm like, I'm telling you, you get a a bunch of people together. You have to have enough time and space for that to happen. These five minute hot seats are ridiculous. You don't have time and space to run out of ideas, right? In fact, if anyone's running it that knows what they're doing, all they're doing is repeating ideas they've shared before. So that doesn't, that doesn't, there's no breakthroughs that come with that. The breakthroughs come on the other side. Our whole idea of the scholarship, we ran this large global summit called the Do Good and Make Money Super Summit. We had 90 speakers and panelists from all over the world, tens of thousands of attendees. 100% of the money we raised went to two nonprofits. And then at the end, we did this survey of our attendees. And on a blind survey, the average income was $32,000 a year. And we had a track for startup, first 100,000. First million and scaling to eight figures. We had people registered in all tracks and the average was 32,000. We're like, that's impossible. You can't, I mean, I live in Vancouver. You can't buy a door on a home for 32,000, let alone live on 32,000. And that's where my partner David said, you know what? We got to do something about this. Let's give away a bunch of scholarships. Let's teach people how to create a high ticket program so they can, you know, make real money quickly and easily. And I said, let's do it. Let's test it. And so we gave away a million dollars worth of scholarships and it worked so well. That's why we're here today. So So, um, since we, we, we've given so much value to people and we've, we've been um, enticing people that they're all waiting. I know I I just can feel it. (laughs) They're waiting. They want to know how can they apply for a scholarship? It's really simple. Um, our, our nonprofit, we have a for-profit and a nonprofit. Our nonprofit is called Entrepreneur Empowerment. So you go to entrepreneurempowerment.org slash scholarship. And we'll have the links below for Tammy. We'll make sure you get you set up with a link, Tammy, so we can track people that come from your show and, and uh, thank them. And you go there and you'll see a video from me that describes the idea of what we're doing. And then there's a button to apply. And right now, uh, about 78.1% of people are being accepted. So not everyone will get accepted. I want to be clear because we don't want to waste your time or ours. If you're not a good fit, we'll send you a bunch of free training to help make you a good fit, right? But if you have no idea of your authority and you have no plan to put any time in, we will reject you because you're just wasting everyone's time. So don't sweat it if you get rejected. It's probably a good idea. And then away you go. But immediately, if you get accepted and, and, you know, almost 80% of people are being accepted, you'll get in and we'll teach you this entire method, all of the training, all of the support, accountability partners, group coaching, so that within four months, you create, blueprint, validate, and fill your pilot for your first or your next high ticket program that guarantees results for your clients. And uh, I think our current record is 28 days. We had a guy, his name was James, join us in that group last fall, last November. And 28 days from start, he had done all of that and sold his first two. It was so cool. So we, we, we allow for four months. Um, one of our strategies we always teach is to build redundancy in. It's actually a 60-day process. 60 days. But we allow for four because life gets in the way, people get distracted, stuff happens, you know, some virus, another virus will hit, <laughs> you know, like there's always something that gets away in life, right? So, so we build a bit of a buffer in, but it doesn't take a long time. It takes about 45 minutes a day. If you got 45 minutes a day, if you got some authority that you want to bring to the world and you're prepared to take some strategic advice to package that authority so it's about outcomes, not process, but outcomes, then we get you there. Um, and uh, we'd be honored to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we think we can really make a difference in your life. There is zero cost. If you're accepted, there's not a dime of cost to the whole program. I want to be crystal clear on that. Um, you know, from a business strategy point of view, it's been one of the most profitable things we've ever done, giving away our free high-ticket programs. 
it's awesome. So I think, I think three years from now, you know, five day challenges are the big thing right now, Tammy, right? Everyone's doing these. I think three years from now, people are going to give away their best high ticket program because it'll create so much goodwill. They'll make money on their other programs. But today people are like, you're crazy. What are you doing? Giving away your high ticket, your best, most pro- profit. This is our most profit producing program. Uh, and we love it. We love it. I think again, it goes back to that you know, you're doing good. You're putting out the good things out into the universe and yeah. being rewarded. And I'm going to do it. So everyone, you know, I I'm I found such great value and I appreciate the We might have an idea. We might have an idea for your program. <laughs> I mean think about it. I invited you onto my podcast and you literally uh use your methods to outline the program that I've been working on and thinking about and developing and you added the spice to it and gave me a lot of insight I needed. So if you one might even say order from chaos. Yes, exactly. Right. Right. And if you think about as a listener to this program today and you say, wow, if Tom provided that kind of value in an hour or less, think about the value that is program, the entrepreneur empowerment program could give, and he's giving away scholarships. Why wouldn't you want to go check that out? There's one reason that people will hesitate, and that is they're afraid of their own success. Fear of failure, there's seven big fears. Fear of failure is actually not the one that stops most entrepreneurs. People think it is, but that's usually employed people thinking about that. Entrepreneurs aren't stopped by fear of failure. That's why you're an entrepreneur. You're out there trying things. It's fear of success that's the nasty little bugger. It's like the coronavirus of fears. It sneaks in. You have no idea it's there. Apparently, we're all carrying the coronavirus in one form or another have for years, right? And now this particular one, COVID-19 or whatever the heck they're calling it, they always give it these freaky names, right? Uh, you know, Now it's like the big bad you know, thing. It's less than 2% of people, right? So it's not about that. It's about you figuring out and saying, you know what? Yes, fear of success might stop me. Yes, I might be kind of freaked out by guaranteeing results. So what? Get in there. We actually have, it's now four calls a week. It was three. And we added in a mindset expert, Dan LaFave, whose entire job is to deal with that freak out. (laughs) That's his entire job. And we love it. And he loves it. And he's awesome at it. And it's like, because here's the thing. Every one of us has fear of success. Every one of us. And if you say you don't, you just haven't stretched enough then, right? Like I've got a call. We do strategic planning once a week with my partner in Australia. Next strategic planning meeting, he has an idea for a seven-figure program, like literally a million-dollar program, which means in our model, we guarantee $10 in sales. And I'm freaked out and excited to talk to him about it. I have no idea what the idea is. I have no idea where he wants to apply it. I have no idea if we're going to do it or not, but I'm freaked out and I'm in the business of doing that. I'm thinking, wow, that's neat. I'm stretching myself. I love it. Right. And so we all have fear of success. If you're feeling that great, honor it. Thank you for sharing fear of success. I'm still going to apply for the scholarship. (laughs) I'm going to apply for the scholarship. Love it. And I think it goes way back to my misspoken words in the very beginning of our interview when I said <laughs> dollars instead of a hundred million, because that was, you know, I probably just misread it, but it just brings out that point that sometimes because we haven't been there yet, we don't know how to get there. Mm-hmm. And so you're saying, hey, I know how to get you there, and I have a scholarship to get you started, and you can come on board yep. and everything. I, I think that that is a great challenge to leave everyone with is to go, you know, jump over the fear and see what is on the other side of it. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen? You'll sign up and get a scholarship and become successful. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, the worst is actually if you don't follow through on your verbal commitments, we kick you out. We treat you as if you paid money. We treat you as if you paid money. And so if you, if you get in and you don't do what you say you're going to do and you don't respond to your, your success partners and you're, and you're not playing the game, we kick you out. And so, you know, that is probably the worst because then you're going to feel like a real poop head, right? <laughs> That's good to know because, uh, you know, we, everybody equates buy-in with cash. Yes. It is real buy-in is your time. Yeah. You know, if you really totally. at, at it, you know, because our time is so valuable and we can always make more money. It's difficult to make more time. And we've only got 24 hours. And it's interesting because I think about that sometimes about what do I apply my time to? And so it is really valuable. We have to start really. Honest. And those of you listening in, if you're ready to, to learn about Tammy's program, when she develops it, send her a note, send her a note. Cause we have this process called validation calls where you interview perfect prospects. It's not a sales call. It's an, it's an interview to test the idea before you launch it. And so, you know, if you're tuning in and you're like, God, I would love that program. If Tammy had that, let her know. And she'll put you on her list of potential validation interviews. So when she's at that stage, you've got someone to talk to that's like perfect spot on that, right? Let's leverage your platform right now. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So everybody, you know, my email is Tammy, T-A-M-I, social media at Gmail. It comes to me personally. So I'm going to put that into the, our show notes too. Well, Tom, I will invite you back again because like you said, there were some uh, things that we could really take a deeper dive mm. on um, in the future. So I'll just put that out there and, and you can think about that if you would like to come back and absolutely love to more conversations. But meanwhile, everyone go to entrepreneurempowerment.org forward slash scholarship. There'll be a hot link in the show notes and apply. And if you're ready to become the person you're meant to be, I think this is a really good opportunity to do that. And don't let anything stop you from becoming who you're meant to be because Every single one of us, we have a big message, we have a big mission, and we need to create these movements because I think you said it, we're doing a disservice to people if we don't give them what we have to offer. And, and we each have something very unique and special. And I really appreciate it, Tom, uh, the fact that you've taken this much time with us today. I really. Um, think the audience really appreciates that. And I'm sure they'll look forward to, you know, another interview in the future with you. And thank Fantastic. you um, for, for helping me with my program because it was at the top of my mind and, and you really, you know, you broke it down so that, so that I can take those steps. I really appreciate that. Well, you're, you're most welcome. And I think the fun part is there's so many podcast hosts that can't wait for your program to be out there. <laughs> so, you know, there's always a synergy, right? There's always a synergy because I'm always thinking strategic partners, right? Yeah. You, you're, you'd have every podcast host out there lining up, lining up to spread word about your program because it would make a difference for them. So I'm, I'm, I'm most, uh, most appreciative of your time, Tammy. And those of you that are still listening in, way to go. Way to go. You could be binge watching Netflix. There's lots of choices you have right now and you're investing and working on yourself. So congrats on that, no matter what. And everyone, what I will do is I'll not only include this in my regular podcast channels, I'll also share it up on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn also so you can see the video. So um, we'll get that rolling today and get everything out there. And again, everyone, Tom Matson. that's M-A-T-Z-E-N, entrepreneurempowerment.org forward slash scholarship. So thanks so much, Tom. You got it, Tammy. Everyone, this is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.